Well, Australians should be allowed to arm themselves to protect against the threat of terrorism. That's the call this morning from Senator David Lionhelm, and he joins me now. Uh, this is a big issue, not just for Queensland as well, but the whole country. Last night, Queensland Parliament sat past midnight and finally voted to tighten gun laws. At the same time, we have former PM John Howard warning people who vote for the Shooters Party could risk another Port Arthur massacre. John Howard's worried. Do you agree with him? Uh, look, I, I do agree with John Howard, and John Howard uh, took that extraordinary measure back in 1996 after Port Arthur massacre. Not trying to milk that for all it's worth, are they? That was 22 years ago, and John Howard said, "If you vote for this party, that's going to happen again." <laughs> uh, that was a hoax. I was watched a few videos. I thought it was fantastic at the time. I was a lot younger then and I didn't know too much. I was focused on other things, but. Yeah, I've watched a few videos and there's a witness called Wendy who can't get any air time and she says it definitely wasn't Martin Bryan that was shooting. Someone was shooting, but it wasn't him. He's got an IQ of 66, apparently, of an 11-year-old boy getting him to sign a confession. I mean, how hard would that be? They just set him up, got him there at the wrong place at the wrong time. A bit like, um, well, right place at the right time. But they're a bit like Isis Khan, you know, they've used him, they've used Jimmy, and I'm pretty sure they used this Martin Bryant character. He the was on 60 Minutes saying he didn't do it but oh, and they also set fire to some building at the end of it and apparently that was to destroy any dna evidence um that and so they couldn't use dna evidence because there was none to convict martin bryant all they had was a confession that's all they've got now the international bankers that pick the leaders that we get to vote for that the leaders have to perform some signature task in order to get there and agree to it now john howard obviously agreed to be a part of this Port Arthur massacre, because those gun laws came in the very next day, I think. They were all ready to go. A bit like the Patriot Act over in the States. It was all ready to go as soon as the plane hit the building. And so you know that it's a hoax. And Paul Keating, he floated the dollar. And then once he did that, that gave him the prime ministership. And uh, Kevin Rudd, he said sorry to the Aborigines. And that cost us now... That's 30, up to 30 billion bucks a year. So each of these leaders, before they have to agree to something before they're allowed to lead the party and then be picked as prime minister. And this one was Howard's um, payout or what he had to do. And tighten our gun laws across Australia. And I've just been down at COAG where we agreed at the end of last year and also recently to tighten our gun laws even further. So I took that, we took that to the parliament last night and unfortunately, One Nation voted against that law. Uh, and, a, and a member of the LNP uh, crossed the floor uh, to vote against it as well. So we have people in this state, including One Nation, that do not want tighter gun restrictions. They want to loosen gun restrictions. And I think all of Australia simply does not want that to happen. I like to think I'm an Australian citizen and, and I'm not for tighter gun laws, so she's not exactly say all of Australia, she hasn't talked to all of us, and certainly one day should, they would have a party or be in Parliament if all of Australia wanted tighter gun laws, so she's just reading her script. Okay, it sounds like an election platform, when is the election? Not due till next year, Carl, I've told you that before. <laughs> You're absolutely confirming you that posted. this morning. You, I you, promise. You, you're promising that? I'll hold you to it. I'll keep you posted. <laughs> Thanks, Premier. Good to talk to you this morning. Uh, good to read a script with you, Premier. Just speaking of Queensland, and, well, Brisbane in particular, that Brisbane City Council, they are $500 million in debt. And I was listening to the radio, and they were saying that there are 80 people in the council that earn $200,000 or more. I'm <laughs> picking up rubbish bins, just... <laughs> Ticket and flicking a few development applications. Where do 80 people get 200? Well, that explains why they're half a billion dollars in debt. Oh, look, the whole place is a mess. And, and who, who lent them that money? Where's that money come from? It comes from the international banks. So they've now got a, an income stream in interest payments forevermore in perpetuity just from the, if you happen to live in Brisbane City Council. <laughs> Everyone should just move out. Said that insolvent. And I suppose maybe the banks would then claim the whole city, wouldn't they? I don't know. Anyway.